Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. Until now, we have seen how to compute the spectrum of a signal, its EFT, but real sounds cannot be represented by a single spectrum. Sounds change in time, and we need to capture this time variation. The short time Fourier transform is our solution. Again, this lecture is divided into two parts, so uh, this is the first one. We will first present and explain the short time Fourier transform equation and then discuss what we call the analysis window. This is the short time Fourier transform equation, basically a modified version of the DFT with few but important differences. So, for example, the input to the equation, the input uh, signal, is not just x of n, but is uh, the multiplication of w, which is our analysis window, by a fragment of x of n. Okay, so here x is, uh, has an argument that has n, our time index, but also has a frame number and a hop size. So l is the frame number and this is our time index, so we will be iterating over l, so we will be skipping through uh, time this way and capital H is our hop size how much we're going to hop from one time instances to the next so basically x is going to be changing in time according to L and H and then at every time instance at every L it's going to be multiplied by this analysis window W of N the rest is the DFT so the only thing that changes is that the input signal changes and therefore the output also is not a single spectrum but a sequence of spectra. There is the x sub l, so the, the, the variable l is the frame number, so that means that the output of the short time Fourier transform is going to be a sequence of spectra each one of the same size and having magnitude and phase, but each one differently because the input will be a different fragment of the sound, stepping through the sound in a progressive manner. Okay? So to emphasize the idea of zero phase windowing that we already have talked about, from now on we generally specify the time index to go from minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1. Okay, so it's always centered around 0. We don't have any uh, phase changes. We don't have any uh, kind of shifting in the, in the time and therefore in the spectrum. Uh, the windowing is a way to step through the sound, as I, as I mentioned. So here we can see uh, a, a depiction of that. And if we use the analogy of uh, image and video, we could relate a spectrum with a photograph, a static image, and then the short time for a transform with video, a time varying image. So here we see in this, uh, in this picture the, the whole time uh, for, a, for a sound at the bottom and how we are basically stepping through uh, the sound by windowing the sound with this analysis window and therefore being able to uh, get all the sound as a sum of basically sound uh, fragments. Okay, to better understand the, the effect of windowing a sound, let's put an example of what happens when we window a real sinusoid and then compute its spectrum. So if we start from a real sinusoid, a sinusoid we already have seen that, so it's a cosine with a, a, a frequency index k sub 0 and an amplitude a sub 0 which can be expressed as the sum of two complex uh, sinusoids, one with a positive frequency, another with a negative frequency. Then if we substitute the, the into the short time Fourier transform equation this uh, signal uh, and we window it, we can step through these different uh, steps in which we uh, first uh, put x of n in, uh, in, the, in the equation, then uh, we are substituting by the, the sum of these 
to uh, complex uh, exponentials. Therefore, because of the linearity of the DFT, we can uh, split these into two uh, uh, equally uh, equations, equal equations, in which in each one we have a complex exponential as the input signal, and uh, the amplitudes can be uh, moved outside. And basically, what we get back to is the sum of two DFTs uh, of the window and with a frequency uh, shifting operation. So basically, at the end here, we see that, uh, that the result is the spectrum of the window, uh, of course, uh, frequency shifted by this, uh, the frequency of the input signal, and multiplied by the amplitude, by half of the amplitude of the input signal, plus, of course, the other uh, window at the other uh, complex exponential frequency. Uh, one is the minus frequency and the other is the plus frequency. So this will be the result of this uh, cosine, so which is basically the, the transform of the window uh, shifted to the frequency of the input signal and multiplied by the amplitude of the input signal. Well, and with these plots, we can understand this windowing uh, process a little bit better. So on the top, we have the window, and uh, underneath is the windowed um, uh, sinusoid uh, that we, uh, we have as, as our input signal. And then the transform of the window can be shown uh, on the top, in which the, the transform of this uh, window, which in this case is a Hanning window, is uh, the magnitude spectrum centered around zero, okay, and with the symmetry and with the given phase. And now if we, if we take the DFT of the windowed sinusoid, well, what we are seeing is basically the same shape than the window, but at the frequency of the sinusoid, at the two frequencies of the sinusoid, the positive and the negative frequencies, and at the phase of the sinusoid too. So we have the two values for the two phases with this uh, anti-symmetry uh, that, uh, that this uh, analysis uh, results into. Okay? So from this discussion we can realize the importance of the analysis window in the spectrum of a sinusoid and thus of any sound. It's clear that we have to spend some time explaining uh, the windows. So an analysis window is generally a real function and is symmetric around the origin. And this is the simplest window, the rectangular window. Its time domain is nothing too particular, but its magnitude spectrum is much more interesting. So time domain, it just has value of 1 for the duration of the window, in this case 64. And the, the spectrum, the magnitude spectrum, has a, a shape which uh, we call it is a sync shape because the, the transform is a sync function. And it basically could be described in many different ways, but we focus on two main aspects, on what we call the main lobe, the, the, the peak at the center, and we'll be talking about the width of the main lobe mainly. And then we talk about the side lobes, which are these uh, small, small lobes uh, next to it, and we basically focus on the level of the highest of this side lobe. So we will talking about the highest side lobe level. Um, okay, so there are many windows used in audio signal processing, and this is the list of windows available in the SciPy module of, uh, of Python. So we can go through them and uh, we can see quite a, a variety of windows. Some uh, of them we are not, we are not going to pay much attention to, but for example, we will be talking about the Blackman window, we'll be talking about the Hamming window, the Hanning window, uh, we'll be talking about, uh, uh, for example, the triangular window, etc. Some others are not uh, uh, so much used in audio. Each window can be distinguished from the others by measuring the main lobe width and the side lobe level and each window offers a different compromise with respect to these two values. So let's show some of them. So uh, the, star, the first one is uh, the rectangular window, 
and the equation uh, shows how to it's computed um, and the the spectrum is uh, what we call a sync function is the sine pi k where k is the the frequency index divided by uh, another sine function so if we look in the in the plots the, the spectrum could be thought is uh, well is the magnitude spectrum so it's the absolute value of this uh, uh, wk so basically is a is a is a sine function with a kind of a, a attenuated um, a function applied to to them at the, at the boundaries so it results into this uh, this shape, very characteristic shape, that's going to be called this uh, sync function. And talking about how to describe it, uh, we mentioned about the width of the main lobe, and this has two bins, and two bins means two samples. And, and this, uh, we have to be careful because this is measured when the DFT is the same size than the window. So if we take uh, a window size of the same size of the window, let's say 10 samples, then it's going to be two bins. But generally, since we do zero padding, then the number of bins is higher. But this is because of the zero padding. And we normally do it in order to better visualize the shape. So in fact, this shape has been generated by a lot of zero padding, so that we can have this smooth visualization. But strictly speaking, the number of bins uh, that we, we, we refer to is two. And the side lobe level, the highest side lobe level, is minus 13.3 uh, decibels. So the, the distance between the centered peak and the first side lobe level. Maybe the most popular window is the Hanning window, which is a raised cosine. So the equation is uh, we do 0.5 plus 0.5 of the cosine. So this raises the cosine. So it's just one cycle of a cosine. And if we compute the spectrum, it also can be expressed as sums of the sync functions. In fact, all the windows can be expressed uh, in the time domain by sums of cosines and in the frequency domain by signs, uh, sums of this sync function. So in this case, is the sum the, in the frequency domain of three sync functions. Okay? And Again, the, the two values that characterize this shape, this frequency domain uh, shape, is the width of the main lobe, which is four bins, so twice as much as the rectangular function, and the side lobe level is minus 31.5 decibels, so which is lower. Okay, now the main lobe is wider, and the side lobe level is, uh, is lower. The Hamming window is very similar to the Hanning, but with a small and significant difference. It's a raised cosine with a step in the, in the, at, the, at the side. By having these small steps into the sides, we get a magnitude spectrum that maintains the same main lobe width, so that's good, it doesn't, it doesn't get uh, wider. But, in exchange, we get a much lower uh, side lobe level, minus 42.7 decibels. And this is, as we're going to see, uh, an important thing. The, the ideal is to have the lowest side lobe level and the narrowest possible main lobe. So, this is a good window. Of course, nothing comes for free, so the side lobe levels do not decrease so abruptly as they go away from the main lobe. The Blackman window is the sum of two uh, sinusoids and, uh, and with that we accomplish a significant improvement in terms of the side lobe level measure. Okay, so uh, we see the magnitude spectrum which the main lobe is wider, is six bins, but the side lobe level is lower, is 60, uh, 58 uh, decibels. And that's uh, good uh, because that's starting to be a uh, quite uh, useful uh, value at the side lobe level for many audio applications. So we, we will come back to that. And then uh, finally, uh, the window I want to uh, end uh, talking about is the Blackman Harris window, which is a very special one. 
because we could basically say that it has no side lobes. So it's a sum of uh, several cosines, in this case it's four cosines, um, with different uh, coefficients in the summing. And then in the frequency domain, the magnitude spectrum, the, the main lobe again gets wider, in this case is eight beams, but the side lobe level is minus 92 decibels. And if we think about it in terms of signal to noise ratio, which is a very important factor in digital uh, signals, 92 decibels is basically below the noise floor of 16 bits of the kind of signals that we deal with. So basically that means that the side lobes, and if we consider them as, as artifacts or as noise, they are not heard. In other windows we could say that the, these uh, side lobes uh, are artifacts that can be heard. Anyway, again, we will come back to that. Um, and now, to finish, let me just compare some of these windows uh, being applied to the same sound. So we start with a fragment of a sound uh, of a certain length, and we are applying three different windows. The first one is the rectangular, the next one humming, and uh, finally the black man. Clearly very distinct spectra. And by looking at these we can see kind of uh, that uh, maybe the best for this particular analysis is the Blackman. We see uh, a smoother spectrum. We see these peaks more, much more clearly distinct. And in fact these peaks correspond to the harmonics of the sound. Okay, so um, this is all and uh, there is a lot of references uh, for uh, the topics I covered, um, especially about Windows. In Wikipedia you can find uh, quite a bit of information about the short time for a transform about Windows. Julius in his, uh, in his website and his uh, online books discusses uh, this uh, quite a bit, so that's a very good reference. And uh, that's, uh, the rest are the standard credits and references. So this is all for the first part of the, of the lecture on the short time Fourier transform. Uh, we have explained the basic equation of the short time Fourier transform and we have focused on the analysis window. In the second part, we will continue uh, with this topic. So I will see you in next class.